News Radio 1000, KTOK, Gwen Falk, and her Lippert talking with candidates tonight. Next, we're going to change from uh, Ward 2 to Ward 6. Now, in the past few weeks, I uh, talked with uh, one of the candidates, Adrian Van Manen, and tonight I plan to talk to the other two candidates. Coming up next is the incumbent. Councilwoman Meg Salyer uh, has served on the council now, and uh, Councilwoman Salyer, it says, in my 2.5 years serving on the city council, and I'm looking at your webpage, uh-huh. uh, the term of council is for how long? A, a term of council, a full term for council is four years, Gwen. And so you were part of a special election, is that right? Uh, well, I was. Um, I filled the unexpired term of Ann Simak, um, who had so wonderfully served as the Ward 6 council person for 13 years. And um, our listeners may remember that her son uh, became a firefighter for the city of Oklahoma City. And so uh, she was um, uh, uh, required to resign. The two of them couldn't work for the city at the same time. And uh, so my uh, election was on, actually, I think this was the first time ever that there was a council election on um, a general election ballot at the same time as a presidential election. And so you and the president were elected at the same time. (laughs) (laughs) We were. And, you know, there's just a teeny great story related to that. Um, My daughter uh, is a college student and in November of 2008 was the first year that she could vote and she was away at college but she'd asked for an absentee ballot and I got this wonderful phone call and she just you know she was glowing she was like mom I got my ballot today and your name's on it and (laughs) it was really an exciting experience for both of us those family moments are pretty special. You are exactly right. That was a special one. So two and a half years, now you're the incumbent, you're running for re-election. Why? Well, I, I've really had an incredible honor for the last two and a half years to serve the citizens of Ward 6. And, you know, leading up to um, my service on the council, I, Gwen, I've spent, I've lived in Oklahoma City for 27 years. Um I'm originally from New York, but certainly hope nobody holds that against me. And I I really, truly count Oklahoma City as my home. And leading up to my service on the council, I've I've spent um, many, many wonderful um, times working as a community volunteer in the areas that are of interest to me that, you know, include public education and include um, economic development and include neighborhood revitalization. And um, so, you know, being able to join my eight colleagues and the mayor on the horseshoe and really affect some significant change in that area has been very meaningful to me. What significant changes are you most proud of? Well, I, I've been working on a, a series of things, and really every day. One of the most exciting things about serving on the council is the um, breadth and depth of subject matter that we deal with. And, you know, in the course of a meeting, we may vote on, you know, the sale of $39 billion worth of bonds um, related to street and bridge repair, and the next discussion item might be uh, backyard chickens. You know, it's a very, very um, diverse subject matter. But some of the things I guess that I'm most proud of are that that I've been working for the last two plus years on the creation of um, a, a what what's called West Town Campus. It's, it's a um, resource center and a day shelter uh, to serve our homeless population. We have not had such a facility since immediately after the bombing in 1995. You probably remember in Oklahoma City that we had something called rest. Yes, I do remember rest. uh, Rest closed um, in early 96, and we just haven't had a facility like that. And so this is a, um, it's a great concept um, in Ward 6 over at 4th and Virginia, uh, we'll have a resource center, which should open in, within the next six months, and it will um, be a, a co-op, if you will, of services um, that will allow us to help hopefully transition um, homeless, some of our homeless population into 
um, back into housing and back into jobs, and they'll be able to access everything from medical and dental help to, you know, having uh, uh, answering machines so that they have a place that they, when they're applying for jobs, people can call them back. We'll have um, Social Security and the VA and even TEAM, the Education and Employment Ministry, um, will have a satellite location there. And the second um, building will be a day shelter um, where folks can come and get a hot meal, uh, breakfast and lunch. Uh, team actually will have a commercial kitchen there and we'll be able to do um, food service training. So it's kind of a you know combo job training and otherwise. And, and it's just something that's been greatly lacking in the community. Um, I've also been working with my neighborhoods, um, both north and south. I think one of the things that came to my attention quickly uh, was a, a graffiti epidemic in um, southwest Oklahoma City, particularly in the area around Mount St. Mary's High School, and sort of at least a related perception that we had some more serious gang activity down there, and I worked very closely with Chief City. Uh, we had a series of neighborhood meetings and developed a plan, um, and sort of following that, I've been working with Commissioner, uh, County Commissioner Brian Maughan who's put together a great program that he's calling SHINE, and uh, we continue to work in those neighborhoods, and I think we've really seen a noticeable difference. Do you think it has uh, diminished the gang activity or do you, or the perception of gang activity? What do you think? Well, Gwen, let me, um, a couple of things. There, there really are two different types of graffiti that we were seeing in the neighborhood, um, and the majority of what's going on in South Oklahoma City is not gang-related, but it is... Um, tagging mm-hmm. uh, and so but but that doesn't diminish to me the perception that when you drive through a block or a neighborhood or a community that's full of graffiti I found it um, frightening and you know somewhat intimidating so whether it's whether it is or isn't you know directly gang related it was uncomfortable for the community and um, you know really I want to credit to Lita Denegri at Mount St. Mary's for recognizing that it was a big issue for her students and her parents. And she helped rally the troops. And um, I have had people tell me, you know, as recently as this weekend, that it has made an appreciable difference. That's great. That, that's a good thing to know. What has been the biggest surprise to you about being on the council? I asked the same uh, question of uh, another incumbent that's running. Uh-huh. And uh, I... I, I found the answer very interesting well i would i guess i would say a couple of things one is is something i mentioned earlier which is the breadth of subject matter um that we deal with i really um you know was less prepared for some of the issues like zoning cases and you know dealing with the issues that come from the planning department on a routine basis you know, we really set all the policies for the city, you know, and then um, approve and ratify all of the actions of the other trusts and um, the groups that we deputize in some way, you know, to operate on our behalf. So uh, that would be one thing. Um, I, I think second, and, and it was a really pleasant surprise, was how incredibly wonderful the city staff is all the way across the board. Um, I have, I've, I'm struck every single day, really, by how uh, focused the majority of our employees are on their job, which is serving the citizens. Mm-hmm. And so it's really been uh, rewarding and um, refreshing to see the dedication that uh, I, I've just experienced uh, throughout all the departments of the city. You know, now, do we have wrinkles from time to time? Of course we do. You know, do things not get done to people's satisfaction? Yes. Do we always have to answer somebody wants to hear to the question? No. But, you know, as a general rule, um, I'm just working at the city with a group of colleagues that um, truly are committed to what they're doing. Talking with uh, Councilwoman Meg Salyer, you can find out more about her at megsalyer.com. 
www.ncpbcommunities.com. Uh, if we can, Councilwoman, I need to take about a three-minute break, and then we'll come back and talk more about your running for re-election. Look forward to it. All right, thank you. You're listening to 1000 KTOK. He's talking with the candidates tonight, currently speaking with Meg Salyer. She is the Ward 6 Councilwoman, and she's running for re-election for Ward 6. Her opponents are uh, Jessica Holstein and Adrian Van Man and uh, Manon, and we are talking with her t uh, tonight about her uh, accomplishments on the council and those kind of things. Councilwoman Salyer, uh, uh, one of the things that many of the other candidates have remarked on is how much money it takes to run for city council. What is your input on that? Well, I, I think it varies, you know, of course, race to race and uh, depends uh, how many opponents there are in the race and the message um, that one needs to get out. So, do you have endorsements? Um, I do have a series of endorsements. Do you want to mention them? Well, I'd be happy to mention some of them. I'm not sure we have time. I'm looking at my calendar, and I'm not, <laughs> not sure I have time for all of them. But um, uh, uh, Sheriff Wetzel um, from uh, law enforcement was kind enough to endorse me. Um, uh, looking at some of the news media, uh, which is interesting i was endorsed by both the oklahoman and uh the gazette i've been endorsed by el nacional uh newspaper i've been endorsed by el latino american um very proud uh that i was endorsed by the urban neighbors uh group which was just an amazing group of mostly young folks but some my age as well um living in and around downtown and who are just passionate about uh, what's been happening in Oklahoma City and the vision um, that we hope to be able to continue. And so I guess that's a decent list. There was, yeah, it's a great list. Uh, the uh, fire people recently created a PAC, and they've been um, supporting some candidates. I don't know if you're one of them or not, but I was interested in your opinion of uh, the fire uh, union creating a PAC and supporting particular some candidates. Well, I am not one of the candidates that they're supporting. And what's your opinion of them having a PAC and supporting others? Well, um, you know, everybody's entitled to do that. Okay. Let me move on. I, w I, will ha I have a pop quiz here. You ready? You bet. I uh, happened to see this uh, actually on the council the day of the Outside Arts Festival vote that, uh, as I understand it, this organization wanted to have an arts festival in Bricktown, wanted to uh, close or limit access to some of the Bricktown businesses by having their arts festival, so they wanted to close the streets. The council had to vote. Uh, did you support that or not, and why? Well, I did support it, and let me clarify just a little bit. Okay. Uh, the the setup of the festival is going to be on Mickey Mantle Drive, mm -hmm. um, but uh, which th is the street in front of the ballpark? It's the street in front of the ballpark between the canal and the ballpark. I think. Yes, yeah. and it's also um, in front of uh, Nona's and Mickey Mantle's, if you will, mm -hmm. that little stretch. Mm -hmm. And um, they had th this. Fest this will be the second year they had the festival last year. And the organizers, I believe, learned some things, and um, they um, attempted to minimize, to the best of their ability, the impact they had on the business. They agreed to move the setup, actually, to Flaming Lips Drive, so that um, known as valet service and alley would uh, not be impacted at all uh, by the street closure. So there was a compromise on this? Uh, there, there were some concessions made between last year and this year that the organizers mm -hmm. um, felt would improve the setup. Gotcha. And um, the second thing that I, I guess there are two other things, if I can be very quick about this. Sure. But um, the, the folks that are um, organizing the arts festival went through the process that the city currently has in place uh, and requires for an, a revocable permit, and they did everything they needed to do, and they met all the requirements to do so. Right. So, you know, when it came to a vote, I didn't see uh, an exception that would cause me to vote otherwise. 
Secondly, the next item on the agenda was a similar revocable permit to close Walker on behalf of McNelly's uh-huh. Pub for a St. Patrick's Day event. That also is a very active thoroughfare, mm-hmm. bringing people from downtown home into Heritage Hills and the, the north neighborhoods. I saw a tremendous inconsistency if we turned one down and voted for the other. Mm-hmm. And I've been tried to the very best of my ability in the last two and a half years to, at a minimum, be consistent. It doesn't make everybody happy, but I'm at least trying to be consistent. It's hard to be Con- I mean, it's not hard to be consistent. Yeah. It's hard to make everybody happy, isn't it? Extremely. <laughs> I think that's probably the one thing most c- people, once they're elected to council, when I interviewed them before, oh, yes, I can do it all. And then once they're elected, it's it's kind of, you know, you kind of go, wow, I didn't realize there's so many points of view. But along that line, let me ask you about the MAPS 3. Yes. Okay, we voted. We passed MAPS 3. We did. Hooray. We passed the tax. But now there's been a little bit of talk on the horseshoe shoe, that maybe the urban streetcar needs to be changed, maybe this needs to be changed. Or what, what is the responsibility, do you feel, of a council person to the citizens regarding the MAPS 3 design? Well, I think we need to keep the promises that we made um, when we uh, presented the projects that we um, proposed to the citizens. And I do, again, I don't, we don't have a lot of time, but I think it's really important, um, you know, to make sure people know that when MAPS 1 uh, was approved 17, 16 years ago, um, the ballot contained both the um, issue about the one penny sales tax, but it also listed the projects on the ballot. Mm-hmm. Since that time, um, there have been... Uh, more than one ruling, and I don't think it was related specifically to this issue, but um, by state statute, you can only have one issue uh, in each ballot question. So that when we vote for a bond issue, as an example, you know, there's one, a, a section that talks about roads, a section that talks about bridges, a section that talks about parks, a sec- mm-hmm. you know, each one of those is a separate initiative. And so because those MAPS projects are viewed as a package, and I think, again, if I said if we went back to MAPS 1, there were folks that were thrilled about the um, ballpark, yes. but weren't interested at all in the library. You're right. And I would say every person thought the river was crazy. They don't now, but they did then. <laughs> and so had those items been separate on the ballot, some might have gotten approved, and others that have turned out to be you know, such great assets to our community might not have ever happened. And so um, they are bundled as a package because everybody has a difference of opinion. What about the urban streetcar? I think it's an incredibly important component um, to uh, uh, what folks voted on. I I hear so much excitement around the community, particularly, you know, from the young folks about seeing this modern streetcar as the first piece, and it's a baby step, but it's the first piece to hopefully a long-term multimodal mass transit system Mm -hmm. serving the region. One of uh, the challengers, or several of the challengers, are thinking that maybe we've put too much money into downtown and that we need to, there ought to be a MAPS 4 and it ought to be anything but downtown. What is your response to that? Well, I've I've heard that and um, I disagree. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that I travel quite a bit around the country, and I don't know any city that's thriving and vibrant that doesn't have a a thriving and vibrant downtown. It's the heartbeat of any community, just like the heart is the center of our body. Um, And so I think it's incredibly important. Um, And I'm a big believer in economic development and the connection between economic development and quality of life. And um, I, I, I just think those things go hand in hand, and there has to be some um, density and some synergy related to those, you know, big projects. Um, thirdly, uh, in this last MAPS proposition, there were components that serve our city at large. Trails, sidewalks are going to be placed 
all over the community. The senior wellness centers were designed to be placed um, uh, around the community. And um, so I think we've addressed a number of those issues. And I guess lastly, uh, Gwen, I would say that, you know, in 2007, the voters approved a massive bond issue, um, of which $500 million, I think, was slated for roads. And those projects are in every single ward of the city. So we're not only focusing on downtown, but we're yeah, who at would the city who level. would think that Project 180 and Maps Three would collide? <laughs> well, and who would? And 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 you know, also, I'm glad you raised Project 180 because remember there that those are dollars, some of which were generated by the bond issue, but the majority of those dollars are the direct result of the magnificent construction of the Devon Tower downtown. Um, those monies are called tax increment financing dollars. They are brand new tax revenues being created by the construction of the tower. If it wasn't for Devon building that building, and you know they could have moved to Houston as easily as they could have stayed here, and they're building a building that created a spinoff of $140 million that we're being able to use not on their project. Okay, we have 30 seconds. Where's yep. the convention center going to be? Good question, Gwen. <laughs> We've got a, we have a MAP subcommittee specifically related to the convention center that's looking at that, making recommendations. They've hired a consultant. Um, that recommendation will go forward to the overall MAPS 3 uh, advisory board, and after that it will come to council for our review and consideration. What is your plan to get the vote out, Councilwoman Salyer? We are working hard. Uh, my word will tell you that they've received more mail than they are happy with probably <laughs> um, encouraging folks to get out and vote and I would like KTOK to spread the message as well Tuesday March 1st well let referendum. me remind everyone this uh, interview will be on our website and anyone can access it uh, through a podcast go to KTOK.com Councilwoman Meg Salyer thank you for your time best of luck on Tuesday Gwen thank you very much for your time as well thank you appreciate bye. it bye bye, -bye. So